This is the new Xtool S1, and this is our first fully enclosed diode laser setup. And just like almost everything from Xtool, everything is nicely packed and should keep things safe in shipping. And you might notice that there's two straps on this. This is a mostly assembled machine, so getting it out of the box is kind of difficult, and these make it a lot easier. And then you can just remove the straps and all the packing material. There's also a ton of foam inside of the enclosure itself. And inside of all these foam pieces, you'll find the rest of the parts to this machine that you still need to assemble. And it looks like Xtool sent me their 40 watt laser unit, but they also have a 20 watt option. There's also a 2 watt infrared laser option, so you can mark and engrave on metal. So kind of like the laser that they have in their F1 laser. And you'll be able to do much bigger designs, but not as fast. But anyways, back to setting up the S1. This does come with a detailed and illustrated instruction manual that does make the entire setup really easy. And here's a closer look at the actual 40 watt laser unit, which is a bit more compact than I thought it would be. And for the most part, it just kind of clips onto the machine, and it uses two bolts to hold it in place. You do have to plug in the air assist line, and one plug to power and control all of this. So I can see how switching out laser heads would be pretty quick and easy. There's also a magnetic probe that goes on the side of this, and this will drop down and touch your material, so the machine knows how far away it needs to be to be in focus. But this can also probe a selected area, and build a mesh in the software, so you can engrave on things that have a curve to them. And you can see as I'm engraving on this piece of wood, that the laser unit is moving itself up and down, so it stays in focus. And as you can see, the engraving looks just about perfect, with every part of this being in focus. But I am getting a little ahead of myself. There's still a little bit more setup on the back of the machine that I need to do, like removing this exhaust vent, and replacing it with the one that has built in conducting that came with the machine, and with this installed I can vent all the smoke out of the room. This also has a USB key that has to be plugged into the machine for it to run, and of course you need to plug in the power supply. And you might have noticed this giant red button on the side, this is an emergency stop button. We do have to set up the air assist, which isn't built into the machine, and you will have to buy this separately, or buy the bundle that comes with it. It does have one plug for power and control, that just plugs directly into the back of the machine. And there's also one airline that does the same. Another add-on that I think is an absolute must is a honeycomb bed like this one. It comes in really helpful when you're cutting things. It allows airflow underneath the piece, which allows the smoke to go somewhere, and with all the thin pieces of metal that it's sitting on, it's not going to get hot. You can also use these magnetic clamps to hold down your material, that will keep it in place or flatten it out. The laser itself does have a metal bottom and comes with these little triangle extrusions that you can put materials on, but I prefer honeycomb beds just because I find them easier to work with. And there is one more accessory they sent with the S1, which is this riser base. And they're going to be releasing two different versions of this riser. And both of these risers will make the machine a bit taller, allowing you to put bigger objects inside of it. And there's now a front and back door to this, so it acts as a pass-through. And they do have another accessory that's basically an auto feeder. And the riser that I have is actually built to use this. So you can cut and engrave really long pieces of material. But it Anyways, with all that done, this is ready to use now. And once I power it on, lights turn on in the inside of the machine, lighting up your work area. There's also a red crosshair right underneath the laser itself. And this is how we line up all of our designs with our materials. And if you're using the Xtool software with this, you can see where this crosshair is at all times, and you can move the laser head around, and it will update live on the screen, which definitely comes in really handy, and makes up for a lack of a camera on the system. And like I was talking about before, this has an autofocus feature, which it just uses this probe on the side to figure out where the surface of the material is. And once it does, it moves over to the side and puts it away, and then moves back to the original location where you had it. So let's actually try using the laser now, and the very first thing I'm going to do is a material test. And honestly, this should be something you're doing on all the materials you use for the first time. So you can see exactly how the material reacts to the laser, and now you have an easy to use reference card. That being said, if you're using the Xtool software, they usually have some pre-configured profiles for different materials. But I'm making this video before this laser was even announced. So sadly, I have no profiles to work from. And by the time this video comes out, the profiles will probably be available. And you can see this did work, and now I know what settings to use to actually cut this out into a card. And there we go. And you can easily make one of these in the Xtool software. You could also change any of the settings, and even the amount, size, and shape of the test points. But that was for cutting, and now I'm going to do another one for engraving. And you can definitely see the difference between each one of these, with some of these definitely being a little more burnt, or complete holes all the way through. And you have to remember, you are using a laser, so there is a chance that things can catch on fire. But if something does catch on fire for some reason, the machine has five flame detectors in it, and if they detect a fire, it will shut off the machine and sound an alarm. But there is also a flame safety setup that you can get for this, that will fill the entire chamber with CO2 and put out the fire for you. With that being said, you're not limited to materials that will catch fire, like stainless steel, with a diode laser setup, seeing that you can mark directly on it. And it definitely does a pretty good job at marking on stainless steel, but that's pretty much its limit, seeing that it won't work on any other metals. Unless the metal is coated, then you can remove the coating and reveal the metal underneath. Or you can use a spray like this, and this will more or less only add a coating wherever the laser touches. And it does leave a much darker finish even on the stainless steel. And once you're done marking this, you just have to wipe off the excess. But here they are side by side, 
outside and you can see the big difference in the color. And like I said, with that spray, you can use it on any metal, along with glass and stone. And there's also laser marking paper that you can use. That's basically just a sticker that you can stick onto metal, stone, or glass, and then engrave on it. And since we're on the topic of glass, you can't really do anything with it unless you put a coating on it. And for this, I just painted on some water washable paint. And because it has this layer here, the laser is able to hit something and it starts to frost the glass. But you do have to be careful what's on the other side, because the laser is still passing through, and this is one of the times that using a honeycomb bed isn't the best. And you can see all the spots where this was actually touching the honeycomb, and the laser was able to mark the back of this. And at least for this, it's not the end of the world, just something to watch out for. And here it is with all the paint washed off, and you can see that it looks pretty nice. And if you are brushing on your paint, just keep in mind that it can transfer the pattern from your brush into the engraving, which you really can't see too well on that spider one. But on this one, you can see all of the brush strokes. And you could do the same process on clear acrylic, but you're not going to be able to cut this using a diode laser. But you are able to cut clear red acrylic, and it does a pretty decent job with larger cuts and basic shapes, but it does kind of struggle with thinner details. And you can see that on the top part of this apple, how it's broken, and the edges aren't as clean as they could be. But you're also able to cut opaque acrylic, but it still has problems doing thinner pieces. And I'm sure I could fine tune the settings on this one a little bit better and have the cut lines a little cleaner. I just wanted to show what limitations you might have if you're doing acrylic stuff. But if you absolutely need these fine details, I do suggest getting the X-Tool P2. And this is a completely different type of laser, which is a CO2 laser. And it is really good at cutting acrylic, even clear acrylic. And I have a full video about this other laser that I'll link to. And here's those same acrylic parts cut on the P2. And you can see how much cleaner this looks. But you are able to cut wood with this much detail on the diode laser. And with just a little bit of paint, you can make things look pretty nice. And out of all the acrylics, black acrylic works the best on the diode laser. And you're able to engrave on it, which turns it kind of whitish. And it works pretty fast. This only took eight minutes to do both of these ghosts. And all of these were pretty easy to design right inside the X-Tool software. The actual ghost design was just a shape that was already in here. And all I really needed to do was add an offset that would work as an outline to cut out, along with a hole at the top, so you can attach this to an earring or it'd make a necklace out of it. And then I can quickly duplicate it and make a ton of them if I wanted to. And a little off topic, but there is a little bit of light leakage between the riser and the machine when you're using it. And I did talk to X-Tool about this problem, and they're fully aware of it, and told me only this riser will have that slight bit of light leakage. And that's mostly because this one's actually designed to be opened when using it. And this riser even comes with some safety goggles because of that. So if you're not going to be using this feeder setup, but still want a riser, you're going to want to get that second version that doesn't leak any light, allowing this laser to keep its class 1 rating for the laser. And earlier when I was talking about using laser paper on stone, you don't have to use it. And you can mark directly onto stone, and your line work will be based basically this whitish gray color. And I think it looks pretty nice on these little slate coasters. And surprisingly, these come in pretty cheap at about a dollar a piece. And when it comes to engraving with the S1, you can actually do full on pictures on just about any of the materials I've shown in this video, but it will definitely take you some trial and error to get it right. And this is my first go on this black acrylic and it didn't come out perfect, but it does have an interesting effect to it that reveals more details depending on how the light is hitting it. And if you are looking to engrave on things that are round, then you're definitely going to want to look into a rotary tool option, which will allow you to do this to a multitude of different round objects. And this same rotary setup works with all of X-Tool's lasers, which is pretty nice if you have multiple lasers. You can also cut an engraved leather, but I didn't have any on hand to use in the video. But make sure it's actually real leather and not PVC leather. And that's because when you cut it, it makes chlorine gas, which is extremely toxic and can also damage electronics. And I highly suggest pausing and screenshotting this list so you can make sure you're not cutting any of these harmful materials. But I'll also have a link to this in the description below, along with links to everything I showed in this video. And if you're watching this video the day that it came out, the S1 is now available for purchase. And you definitely have a few different options, like just the machine itself. There's also the rotary and riser bundle, along with the all-in-one setup. And if you're ordering within the first month of this coming out, they're going to be giving you the air assist and honeycomb setup as a free gift. So it's all really going to depend on what you're doing and what you need. And I definitely prefer this fully enclosed setup compared to their D1 Pro. And you can see they take up almost the same amount of room, and they have a similar size work area. And if it wasn't clear already, x did send me this laser setup to make this video. But that being said, all my thoughts and comments on this are all my own, and I honestly think this is a really nice setup, and a great move in the right direction when it comes to diode lasers. Seeing that open air diode lasers can be very dangerous if you don't know how to take this proper safety precautions. But anyways, I think that's about it for this video, so if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. And of course, if you're interested in anything you saw in this video, I'll have links to everything in the description below. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!